Hey guys, welcome back. This is Steve with LRM Leasing. Today we're going to get down and dirty. So today the truck that I'm working on happens to have an air leak. He did go to another shop. They wanted to replace the ABS valve. 90% of the time, that is not the problem. The ABS valve can range five to $600, where the quick release valve behind the fifth wheel ranges anywhere between 30 to 50 bucks. How do you replace the quick release valve? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. You guys can save a lot of money. Um, that's a part that you can carry in your toolbox that's very small, I'm gonna show you right now. As well as if you do it yourself, you can avoid those road calls that will range anywhere between four to $800, depending where you're at on the side of the road. You will get a little dirty. You're gonna to have to have a little patience, but you guys can do this and you can save a lot of money. I'm gonna describe all the tools that we're gonna to need today. What you're gonna need is at least two crescent wrenches, which I have right here. All right, so I have two crescent wrenches, and then you need two wrenches. You need half inch, all right, which I have here. So we have two half wrenches, get a 3 8 ratchet, and then your socket. You're gonna need at least a half inch, and if you have a small extension, it would be helpful as well. If you have electronic, that'd be great as well. It just makes the job move a little bit quicker, and as you can see, it's not that big. You guys can store this in your truck, and it's battery operated, no air. And then the last thing you would need, Teflon tape. So we're gonna need that for the air fitting so we don't have any air leaks. What I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna remove the quick release valve from the truck. Then we're gonna use the crescent wrenches again to remove the fittings. The other key is if you guys don't remember how the line's gone, you can do a few things. Use your cell phone, take a picture from a far away, not up close, so you can distinguish where all the lines are. Or if you have color coordinated uh, zip ties, you know, different colors, orange, green, it doesn't matter what color, just so you guys know the orientation of the airlines. And as you can see right here, it's not that many. On this particular truck, it has two airlines, big rubber ones on the side, and then you have one in the front and one on top. Now, there are gonna be probably three different configurations, and I'll have pictures posted as well so you guys would know. And then again, take a picture of it so you know the orientation. It's super simple, don't overthink it, and it's to save you guys a lot of money. All right, guys, so on this truck that I'm working on, this quick release valve has four airlines. We have a rubber, one on the left and one on the right. And then you have a green one on the top and the black one in the front. Now it could be blue or the same color, but the one on the top will go from here to the ABS valve. And then the other one from the front will come down the side of the frame on the driver's side of the truck. If you notate it or take a picture, like I said, and then you would know. And then the rubber lines, they'll go from the side to your brake chamber on the parking brake side. So this valve, when you push in the valve, it receives the signal to release the brakes. All right, so that's what those lines will go to on this particular truck, and I'll show you on the others. All right, guys, so the first step what we want to do is remove the air lines. So you're going to need a crescent wrench for this. What you're going to do is you're going to take the line here and break it free. Now, if the line doesn't come free and it starts spinning, that's where the second crescent wrench will be helpful to hold on the inside. Once it does, it should come freely off, just like so. And then the quick connects are pretty easy. There's like, you'll see a little collar. All you gotta do is push it in and the lines come out. Just do both of them just like that. And then the same thing, you're gonna break this line free with the crescent wrench, unscrew it, just like so. Now that you have all the air lines removed, here comes the dirty part. We're gonna get underneath the truck. There's gonna be a slotted hole. This is where you're gonna have to use your wrench, right? It's a half inch. All right, and you're gonna have to snake it in there and you're gonna hold it from the inside and you're gonna use another wrench or socket to remove it from this side so it can come right out. I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so we have two bolts and a nut. The nut's on the inside. There's two slotted holes, which you'll see a picture of, and you gotta put your wrench through it to hold the back side. Now we're coming out. All right, guys, so as you can see, I got the valve out. And like, uh, there's two bolts, right? You have a bolt and a nut, which takes a half inch. Now that we have the valve out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fittings off. The fittings should be still reusable. If you want, you can always replace them. But in this case, I'm gonna reuse them. There was no, nothing wrong with them. And this is where the two crescent wrenches will come into play again. As you look here, right there, you'll see that there's a spot where you can put your crescent wrench to hold it from not moving. Next one, apply, just down on it and just start taking it off. Once you get all the fittings out, you don't have to remember orientation so much because they are all the same size. 
So that's the good news. Just remember that if you look at this fitting, it's totally different from the others. So you'll have like a flared looking fitting. Those will be on the side. The push on ones will be one on top and one in the front. So and I cheated, so I already loosened this one up. I'm gonna just move these fittings. And I'm not worried about the push on fittings because if you notice, they're both exactly the same, same fitting. All right, just remember where they go. One on top, one in the front. And also follow your pictures and you'll see. Here's my new valve, nice and pretty, not dirty yet by me. It's a Bendix, which I have the box. So this is where we're gonna use our Teflon tape. Around the threads, get it nice and clean. If anything, use a rag, something just to get the debris off. And then once you get it off, grab some Teflon tape so you don't have air escaping between the threads. And what you wanna do that is you wanna do that with every fitting you got. All right, and again, just take your time. Once you get threaded in, hand do it. Because if this, way you can avoid cross threading and do that for all your fittings clean the threads off and then just put your teflon tape on all you got to do is do a few turns you don't have to do a lot just enough for it to seal just like so do the same thing thread it in and it's small see something small again you guys should have this in your truck especially if you have any air leaks you need to replace fittings now, just remember guys, we don't want to crank down so hard where it becomes impossible to replace it again down the road. Just get it nice and tight a little. And the good thing is you don't have to worry about the orientation for the plastic ones, because about 90% of these, you can move them, they're, they're swivel. So just get the air fittings on, and then the, the ones on the sides even easier because they're just straight fittings. I'm just doing enough to get tight, that's it. No more, no less. So that part's easy. So all your fittings are back on the valve. Now we're gonna just reinstall and it's that simple. I'm gonna hop back underneath. You guys will see a quick shot. We'll go back on the top end. You'll see how I screw everything back in. And here's the ratchet. This might be the fast way. All right. So now I have the quick release valve mounted to the frame. Now I'm gonna reconnect the lines. This one's a little bit easier. Let's just say that you guys forgot to mark it or take a picture of it. I want you guys to take a look at the airlines and see how they fell. So you'll see that there's a rubber line on the right and one on the left. And then you'll see the two airlines, the green and the black. And if you look at them, look how they lay. Green on top, black on bottom. There's a good chance, 90% chance, that if you do it this way, these two lines, you might have in the right spot. If not, then reverse. But they've been sitting out in the weather for so long, it practically molded the way it should go on. And then two rubber lines, it's the easiest thing. You have one on the right goes on the right, one on the left goes on the left. So you really can't make a mistake on this. What I'm gonna do right now is reconnect the lines. And if you could see, I have my fittings orientated in the wrong place. And like I said, they swivel. Just grab it with your fingers and then pull it in the direction that you need it. So first thing is, I'll install the rubber lines. I suggest that you guys do it with your fingers first. This is how you avoid cross-threading the screw. Because if you cross-thread it and it goes at an angle and you step on the release the brakes, you'll hear a gush of air, and then you're gonna need a fitting. So my suggestion is you use, do it finger, put it on by a finger tight to get started. It should go on smooth, just like so, and do the same side. And then the only thing you would have to do is take your crescent wrench and snug her up. And that's it. Don't hulk it. Just pretty much snug, turn a little. I would say maybe, if anything, a quarter. There you go. She's all snugged up. And then the last thing is the two airlines. Green on top, black on bottom. Fits like a glove. Job is completed. Very simple. Just by learning how to do this will save you guys hundreds of dollars, especially if you're stranded on the side of the road. Like I said, this is one style that I showed you. Now the other style looks exactly like this. There's one port on one side and one on the other. The only difference is that there'll be another brass fitting to connect four rubber airlines instead of two on this one. And the reason being for that is, is because you have parking brake chambers on the rear axle and in the front. On this particular truck, it does not have a brake chamber for parking, it's only for service. So this axle will never park. It's free moving until you step on the brake. The third style is it's on the newer trucks 
I want to say 18, 19 right now. The only difference is, is on the side ports, instead of having one on each side, now there's two. That, and it's the same thing. You're gonna have a brake chamber that goes from the front port, you know, the one closer to the frame. This here is gonna be for the front brake chamber. The one towards the back is for the back axle. Same thing on the left and the right. That's the only difference. Same here, you're gonna still have the air fitting in the front and air fitting on the top, and same locations. The only thing they added was brass fitting. If they have dual parking brake chambers or on the newer trucks, which will have an additional port. So you'll have two on the left and two on the right. All right. And remember guys, this was the follow up from another video that I did for air leaks about this particular valve. It will show you how to diagnose it. Remember, there's two ways to check. If this front valve is leaking at any time, I would always check by pinching this top airline, if the air goes out, replace this first. Now, if it doesn't happen, and I've seen it where you don't hear an air leak, but the brakes are still applied, let me tell you something, the shop's always gonna say ABS. I want you to guys think about it. $600 or 30 bucks. If anything, I would say, start with the cheapest one first, and 90% of the time, that's the problem. This will save you money. If the technician is adamant about it, just say, hey, it's fine, 30 bucks, I wanna replace this. And if it fixes it, guess what? You saved money. You saved $600 plus that labor because it's more in depth to replace that valve. So just keep in mind, this is the valve about 90% of the time. Here's a picture of the one I was telling you, same exact valve. The only difference is that they put brass fittings to accommodate for the brake chamber for the rear axle. So you'll have four total of rubber airlines Two on the left, two on the right. And then, like I said, an air supply on the front and one on top, exactly the same. So you'll see this style. And again, it's to accommodate the four brake chambers on the rear and drive axle. So on this valve, as you can see, this is the newer style, 18 and newer. You'll see that there's two ports now instead of the brass fitting T. So you have two on this side and two on the other side. So one on the left, one on the right. And then again, the same is still the same. You have a air on the top and an air fitting on the front. So nothing's changed. The only difference is, is that now you have two ports instead of one on each side. What you saw today, you got down and dirty, how to replace this quick release valve, leave a comment at the bottom. If you guys want more content, more how to do videos, guys, you gotta subscribe to get that information to you. And if you guys like what you saw today, please pound that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video.